Hello, uh, welcome back to the uh, class of computer graphics. Today we will continue on our discussion on the uh, computer graphics. We will mainly talk about the uh, basic open gel structure. So I wish that at the, at the end of this lecture, I, uh, I wish that you can understand the basic open gel program structure. Uh, so the how the open gel support the, these different spaces that we talked about last time. And uh, before we move on to the, uh, today's lecture material, let me briefly run over the, what we talked about last time. Uh, we talked about the two different spaces, actually screen or, and uh, screen and uh, screen world spaces. We talked about how we can actually convert the coordinate from the world to the, the screen space. And we also the, talk about the basic structure of the OpenGL command. And then uh, we, uh, we talked about all the issues in the example of the, this Julia set, which is an, uh, uh, this uh, fractal. So uh, the last time, actually, we had this, the, uh, some of the, I asked you to go over the, the chapter one, chapter two of my book. So the, <clears throat> since this whole month, there should be some sort of the actually uh, reviewing process. So actually, I prepared some very simple quiz. So uh, please click the, this quiz, uh, quiz, uh, quiz link, and you can see the Google form, and then there are some of the questions, and then you can answer, you can actually go over this book, uh, uh, you can even uh, now the, go over the, this book, so this uh, the material, and you can answer this one. This is like, since this online, uh, <coughs> we will do the, this online, this, uh, online lecture, you can, uh, this is actually open book, example. So you can, uh, you can, uh, the, but the, when you are taking this one, you, uh, the, this quiz should be taken by yourself. Okay, so today, uh, <coughs> uh, 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 as I mentioned uh, before, I will talk about this one. But there, uh, uh, I also went over the, some of your questions. Uh, actually, I found a very uh, interesting question. I will show you uh, them here. So these are actually the two questions uh, that uh, uh, your fellow student actually the, uh, the asked. So actually, uh, I found this very interesting. I will show this one. Also, these are the actually the, uh, related each other. So one of your fellow students mentioned that the, I mentioned that OpenGL does not follow the real physics. Then uh, actually he or she asked that what are actually the uh, novel perspective of the uh, the rendering these uh, uh, the things, right? Uh, actually, the what other recent trend and something like that. Actually, the, we will talk about the, actually uh, OpenGL direct uh, direct X. They can, uh, they can underline this the technique uh, of uh, of those actually the API. But actually, the, uh, as you can see, some of the early the uh, application of the in, in, uh, uh, of the computer graphics is game. You know that actually one of the main requirements of the game is that the real-time performance, right? Uh, uh, because of that, actually, those actually the, uh, the uh, rendering technique designed early on is actually aim for the uh, uh, aim for the very fast rendering performance instead of the very high quality one. But the, uh, 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 basically, the some of recent technique actually the, uh, we want, uh, basically we wanted to have more high quality rendering results, right? So because of that, actually, the ray tracing technique. Has been studied a lot. Uh, also, the recent actually we are getting better GPU, and so that actually we can uh, we can now actually perform the ray tracing in a real time. And then based on by utilizing this ray tracing technique, which is very different from rasterization, uh, uh, based on this ray tracing, we can actually achieve very high quality uh, results. Also, the another student also asked that uh, as the physically based render is getting more widely used. Uh, but also he or she also mentioned that there are actually also many uh, 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 non uh, non physical based renders. Like the, he also said, uh, mentioned that Unreal Scene Render. I don't know what it is, but there are also this the Doctor Strange CD. Basically, the, if you look at the movie, some of the effects not really physically based, right? Basically, it's more like it, uh, effect, right? It's just a very fancy one, right? It may not be follow the physics, right? That's the why really, uh, in the end, we need uh, this imagination under the game, also the, this movie. So basically, there could be the very different rendering, uh, rendering styles, uh, other than the, this physically based one. So the, uh, basically, the two of, uh, to accommodate those kind of flexibility, the recent rendering technique actually evolved in a, uh, uh, evolved in a general way to support them. So actually, the recent GP, uh, uh, because of the actual recent GPU actually can now support the uh, support the render this uh, 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 kind of more general uh, language, almost like CPU. So also some of the recent rendering engine also support that kind of one. 
So actually, they're obviously they're we actually in the uh, kind of the uh, beginning process of the actual generalizing this rendering process, also the generalizing this GPU. I think that there will be the more. Uh, uh, I think the more uh, uh, more uh, more will come along with this line. So these are the actual major response to your the uh, the question that uh, these are the not the exact answer. I wish that uh, you can also study more along with this line. Think about recent technology, and you can see the actual how the recent technology actually the. Uh, uh, responding to these issues, actually. Yeah, thanks for the bringing up the, this very interesting question. <laughs> now I'll get back to the, to the lecture material. So, uh, <clears throat> still, I mean, nonetheless, there could be the main different rendering techniques, actually, the OpenGL and DirectX. Actually, these are based on rasterization. Uh, uh, basically, the which is actually one of the one of the most important actual rendering techniques. Uh, so I, that's why we we'll talk about this one. The main reason, the the, the main uh, main successful reason why we are using a, a lot of OpenGL and DirectX is that actually they actually uh, we can we can perform this rendering process in a, a real time, so that we can use it for the game technology or something like that. So OpenGL is kind of the graphic life. Uh, <clears throat> you can see that actually we can do the rendering through this library, but it's, it's kind of the graphic interface. Also, the initially OpenGL wanted to run the OpenGL program uh, run under this uh, 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 wide different devices, not just uh, not just the PC. Also, the only on be actually the we can uh, uh, they aim for the running on the Linux something like that. Also, the uh, it's not actually also the this. Uh, OS dependent, we can run this OpenGL on the Windows, Linux, also there is the recent this uh, Android phone. <coughs> In a way, actually, this actually cross-platform graphics interface for 3D rendering and 3D also the by using this OpenGL, we can also we can actually utilize this uh, underlying 3D hardware acceleration. If your cell phone uh, equipped with a very fast GPU and using the OpenGL program, then this actually the your program and uh, you uh, using OpenGL can utilize the underlying this 3D hardware. Uh, this uh, third hardware on your the cell phone. The design philosophy of OpenGL actually based on these two main characteristics. Uh, it aims for the small but powerful set of low-level drawing operation. So actually, OpenGL provides a uh, fundamental operation uh, related, uh, related to rendering. But uh, but actually, it doesn't have the, uh, any function to interact with any device or uh, dependent or the Windows dependent system. So basically, the uh, it could be uh, the main main function of this one. Actually, can be run of uh, can be run across the different platform. That's the main characteristic. Then you can see that actually these are actually very powerful. The, uh, some of the design philosophy of the OpenGL, but you can see that actually one of the potential problem. For example, if you wanted to support the very complicated rendering function, then obviously it's, uh, you, may, you, can, you may not find the appropriate API from the OpenGL since it's mainly the uh, mainly actually has the small, uh, small this core uh, API, right? Also, there if you if you wanted to develop the uh, Windows based OpenGL, then you need to have certain some other library to actually uh, to allow you to program the uh, uh, under the OS, the uh, Windows OS. It means that there should be some other library actually. So there, uh, in uh, in this class, we will actually mainly use the, this two one. Actually, these also very uh, very old or the very classical one. So GL UGL utility library or GLUT, uh, this GL uh, utility toolkit. GL actually provide more complex rendering method. So you, you can see that actually some of uh, actually some of the, the API under the, the GLU start with the GLU. Uh, also you can see the GL, GLUT. But actually the these are kind of old one. Also there are many uh, advanced ones that uh, the, if you look at the recent open GL. There are also the more actually uh, different library that works with the, uh, some of the recent OpenGL ones. You might heard about the GLFW, GLM, and so on. So basically, the um, these are also providing similar, also more advanced, also the wider set of the function, but main idea is similar to these ones. Uh, GL uh, GLU actually the, uh, for this library it was actually portable to the Windows, some other uh, different OS. Uh, uh, also, it has a very simple uh, actual overhead. Uh, basically, it hides away a lot of details. For uh, uh, for example, for opening window in your OS, so it's very simple to uh, it's, it's very easy to use. Uh, but actually, it doesn't have the, a lot of the <coughs> functionality. Also, the it actually the uh, base also it also has a very basic function. So 
Uh, it actually has a very simple set and uh, we'll see that later on. But there, uh, also it uh, comes with the limitation. Uh, it actually doesn't support the wide center interaction. And also it has uh, some of the, it's, it's kind of old, so actually it even used a lot of the, these uh, global variables. And then the, some of the recent one actually there, uh, <laughs> this kind of library even supports the recent actually the graphics uh, technology like the Vulkan library or something like that. You can download it very easily from the Windows or some other one, but there, for the homework we will mainly uh, uh, we'll actually uh, uh, mainly support the Windows. And uh, also the, if you Google it about the, uh, this GLU, the GLU library, there are a lot of, uh, a lot of references. Even OpenGL, Open the programming guidebook provides some of the sections for this. Uh, so in the end, uh, actually this is some, uh, uh, ideally we wanted to create some sort of the OpenGL out of the window, I mean the, our this application window within the, this uh, window screen, right? You can do that by calling some of these functions like the GLUT initialize init window size. Basically, the, it means that my window size is the 400, 400 something like this and height. And then uh, I can also the, uh, position the, uh, within this uh, overall window screen. Like the GLUT init window position 100 by 100. I guess that starts from the origin of the window screen and uh, uh, basically the, uh, make, some span, uh, make the space of 100 and 100. I position my a window screen uh, over here, something like that. Also, there uh, basically there uh, uh, we can also need to set up the viewport. A uh, viewport. Viewport is that so for this actual hold your window screen, and then uh, based this one actually the, I created my the screen space for my min uh, my application for my this Julia set, and then. Uh, also, there within this one actually there I can define the area that uh, where I can use. We can we can actually use the whole screen as a viewport. So actually this one actually this one I use the, the uh, <coughs> this I call GL viewport starting from the zero and zero. This should be the here zero and zero and then uh, at the width and height W and H indicating the the width and height. So I'm actually using the this every uh, 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 the uh, all this, uh, all the space. But also you can create a different, uh, you can also use a small viewport. For example, you can use the only the partial portion of the, your window for the certain Julia set, or you can use the, some other space, some other, other actually the, uh, visualizing this, uh, the factor set in, in a different way. You can use actually the only portion of this one. That's the concept of viewport. And <laughs> also establish the, uh, basically the, uh, we need to, last time we talked about how we can actually map, map from the world, script, uh, world space or the screen space, right? Uh, basically, the, by calling this function, OpenGL providing that functionality. So uh, basically, the GL also 2D. Actually, the, uh, I, will, uh, uh, I will mention later on what's the meaning of this author. Uh, I'll talk about it later on. But basically, the, you can say that, you can think that this is a kind, a kind of setting up the, uh, this camera. Uh, uh, basically, the uh, under the world space. Uh, basically, the, we are only looking at looking at the space of the, the world from the left to the right, uh, bottom and top, something like that. And then basically, the, we are setting up the actually the, the camera in the world space. Uh, if you if you recall the, the uh, our uh, 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 last lecture material, you can see that you can connect what we talked about here and then through this function. And again, our this sample code of the, this uh, uh, Julia set. Uh, if you look at the actually source code here, uh, uh, basically we start with the, the, some of the, uh, this actually, the, <coughs> we actually make sure that we are linked to some of the live OpenGL, this uh, OpenGL and GLU GL, uh, relay library. This actually common header file, GL, GLUT, GL, GL, uh, U, something like that, that kind of header file. And then also we define the, some of the callback function, callback function. So basically, you might heard about the callback function here, uh, but it's basically, the <clears throat> uh, a lot of graphical application we interact with them with the mouse, something like that, right? For example, if I actually, uh, if I, uh, given this my function uh, here, something like that, actually, we, we might have this closing the closing button, the, the, this uh, 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 closing button within your screen, right? If I click that button, the window should be uh, uh, terminated, right? It means that. Within our, the, uh, within our program, we should have a certain function that can respond to this kind of user interaction, right? That's the callback, actually. Uh, basically, uh, we assign some sort of function, callback function, uh, when this button is clicked, 
and then uh, uh, we actually set up that some of some function will call back uh, responding to that user interaction. So there are actually many callback function like the display. Also, when you click the keyboard, this keyboard press the relay function, mouse relay function. Also, sometimes also we can reshape the window size, right? So that will actually reshape. At that case, we call this uh, uh, this function will be called something like that. They, they, they actually their main concept of call uh, callback. The call, the concept of callback is very, uh, very common in the main, uh, across the main, uh, what, virtually all of the, the Windows based actually programming, even the I guess your, the, uh, the Android, uh, uh, Android programming, and we define the complex the function here, the, the C that we talked about last time, which is somewhat very uh, width and height, I guess uh, that's our, our window width and height, and then uh, <laughs> I guess I mean there. We are using the Visual Studio 2017, but actually the, uh, all, uh, also here I shall briefly talk about uh, uh, the uh, uh, cases with the Visual Studio 2015. I, 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 I'm told that CA said that actually they are uh, basically they are similar to each other. So actually that I'm just explaining things which is based on 2015, but I guess TA will talk about things based on the, the, uh, the 2017. So basically the, when you compile your, the, the code with the, the Visual Studio, you need to make sure that your header file or the library should be in the proper the directory. So, for example, further, uh, 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 suppose I actually located my ELL header file library within this uh, GLUT, right? Then I should uh, make sure that my additional include directory located there. I should mention that one within that, that setting. And then also the library should be called uh, somewhere here, additional library directory. Under the link in general, something like that. Also, the uh, this DLL file should be the located the, uh, uh, here actually. So it can vary to the different the, uh, Visual Studio version, but this is the case for the 2015. Uh, on the TA, we talk about 2017 later on. So make sure that you locate it. You make uh, make sure that you locate it prop uh, the, the uh, header file library in a proper location. And then, then you can compile and also link and the wonder this code. Basically, the, this is actually the uh, this code is the Julia set, which is actually skeleton code of the, our this first program assignment K1. And this actually main function, same thing. Uh, here we call the GLU, uh, GLUT init, GLUT display mode comes with the GLUT single and RGB. Uh, basically, if you Google the, this function, you can get the, the detailed information. Here, GLUT RGB is that we are you basically the, when we are uh, showing the, this window, we need to use the color, right? So that's why the, in this case, we use the color of the RGB for uh, for maintaining this color information, this image image information. So basically, we are using the RGB here. Uh, uh, basically, we are using only single buffer. Later on, we'll talk about the using the double buffer, but the, basically here we only use single buffer. Basically, the only the, uh, we can see the only single buffer, single the, the image here. We set up the window size, the window position, and the, uh, another this uh, uh, creating window. And also, the, uh, we define the, this, uh, we actually declare the, this callback function, right? And then, so we we'll link that uh, with the, the GLUT. Uh, so basically, the, we actually ask the GLUT when the, uh, for example, for the mouse case, when the mouse button is actually the click, then we ask the GLUT call, uh, user by the callback function, like on mouse button, something like that. So actually, we link the, this, the, our uh, 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 dedicated callback function with the GLUT. <coughs> and then we start to some uh, initialize in the GLUT main loop. In other words, we, we actually the drawing the, the image here. And uh, basically, the, uh, the initialization actually performed in here. Also, the, uh, this initialization will be the execute, uh, it will be called at the beginning of the display function, which will be the mentioned later on. If you look at initialization, basically, the we creating uh, for the, the uh, image space, the screen space, we creating some buffer, right? It contains three image, basically, it has the, uh, the pixel, and each pixel contains the RGB, right? And then you can uh, basically it's, it's like you're creating some uh, array. So there obviously we want to initialize, right? So there uh, basically we, we here we call the gel clear. It means that it actually initialize the color buffer bit. Basically, the, this actually color buffer, color buffer. Typically, we also using the the these two buffer, color buffer, 
also the uh, we actually using the actual zip buffer containing containing this depth, but the, uh, we'll talk about this later on. But the, right now we only be using the, the this color buffer, and we actually initial we clear the this color buffer with the, this the GL clear color with RGB. So the blue is the only one. So actually the uh, so so that's why <laughs> let uh, uh, let me run the this Julia set demo. Uh, here. Uh, <laughs> so here, uh, when I reshape, right? Then when I reshape this one, then OS our window is creating event if to the that it send that event to us to our the application window application, and then GLUT catch that the uh, catch that event and then. Uh, we only uh, we'll set up that actually the when when that uh, when that event happened we already the link to our callback function so actually that that's what we can do reshape also we can do the, a lot of the keyboard and mouse interaction here but actually when we do the this one that whatever offer we do is we need to the rewrite initialize buffer and you can see the very drawing you can see the drawing process and initially the initial initial background was actually blue right the main reason is that. Let me get back to our other uh, here. Initially, the uh, we initialized our the buffer screen with the blue RGB. B is only the one, right? It's the blue one. That's why you can see the initially the uh, it was the blue, and then we actually uh, we actually the setting of the color. You can see the, the process of actually drawing. That's the main idea. And actually, the you don't need to know uh, 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 this this one right now, but the just high level. Uh, these are actually the matrix mode, geoprojection, and so on. It's a related to camera setting. So here also the I, I said the GLU also tree that we talked about before, we setting up the camera. And another one is the uh, model view, which related to the, actually the model transformation. Uh, so actually this one will explain later on more. And uh, say when you reshape, when you actually change this window size in here, we call this function, and then <coughs> uh, basically the uh, uh, OS actually give us the model actually new width and height of the window, right? And then uh, since actually the, we need to define our the, uh, with the reshape window, we need to define the, the model that viewport area, right? So that's why we actually using the GL viewport uh, uh, starting from the, the origin to the end, width and height, which are the actually uh, new reshape window, the width and height. And there are some other information here, but you can basically there, I know that. Uh, explain this code line by line is very tedious actually, but I read it, it might be better for you to download it our PA one skeleton code, then, then look at the code and think about it actually. Then you can very easily understand this one. The main high level idea here is that we actually make sure that the center of the wall, <laughs> uh, basically basically the uh, the center of the screen, uh, the center of the uh, when you reshape this one, the center of the screen actually. Uh, uh, maintain in the actually the center of the our the uh, viewable world. That's actually what we are doing. We compute the center of the world, or uh, then based on this one, we define the, actually the we define that the the world width and height based on the this the, uh, reshape this one. I think that in this case actually the we are main. Uh, 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 I uh, I will get back to this issue. Uh, what's the main idea? Uh, another idea behind this one. Uh, in summary, I talked about different things, but actually. Uh, here, this actually is our the whole window screen, uh, the, the OS window screen. This is our the, uh, our this the drawing area for our uh, our own uh, program, and we define the this the viewport within this area by calling GL viewport, and then uh, across the, the infinite the, uh, space of the Julia cell world, we we all, we can only see the only the uh, limited area, right? To do that, we set up the camera. So by doing that, we call GLU also 2D with this viewable area. You might recall that the world the left and right, something like that. And then we need to, for, for every coordinate that we define here, we need to transform from here to there, right? By passing through NDC, right? Uh, but uh, actually, that could be, the, actually, that is already done by the GLU, that uh, GL, OpenGL. So that's why actually we are using that one. And then uh, we, uh, you can recall that there are many operations for, uh, for each pixel, but uh, by using the GL, OpenGL, uh, they can be done very efficiently by using the uh, underlying GPU. And also there's some other uh, related OpenGL, initializing or something like that.
And actually, this actually main display code. This actually the uh, looks a little complicated, but overall it's very simple. So actually, the whenever we need to read, uh, whenever we uh, whenever we need to draw our the screen again, we call this function display. So that one, and then we initialize it, and then we actually uh, that's on the delta one. You can see that actually delta is actually the uh, some of the uh, this actually the world width and this also the the, uh, the, the the width of the screen, right? You can see that this actually the per pixel area, one of the corresponding uh, width of the world width actually. And then we need to actually go over all the pixel from the left, uh, uh, from the left, left to right and top to the bottom. We go through, go through the, uh, the, uh, every pixel and then we want to compute actually the, one of the actual world coordinate for each pixel. Uh, <laughs> so basically, the, uh, we starting from the world and uh, world left and bottom, world left and bottom, something like that. And then, uh, and, uh, uh, when we actually in increasing uh, pixel one by one, we increasing the this uh, world of uh, uh, world. Uh, uh, we co compute the x coordinate, uh, y coordinate in the world. And then we actually the code that Julia said that we talked about last time. We actually give the this p. Uh, the p is actually the x and y coordinate. And with the C and uh, some, uh, you, you might remember, remember that it's an iteration number and then also this uh, R. And then uh, you might re remember that uh, when we, uh, once actually Julia said it's a return, that if we see that the iteration number is the theta this maximum one, in this case 255, then it is actually the uh, converse already, right? So we set the, this uh, uh, black color, uh, nothing interesting there. But for other case, we actually computer some color I, G, B in a way that by utilizing this iteration, uh, uh, iteration number, also this the R value, this magnitude of that, uh, uh, that number, right? Uh, this, uh, this, uh, that complex number. <laughs> so it, it, it's not really important what are actually what this equation means, but basically there, you can design your own way, but actually there are, we somehow utilize that one and computing I, G, B. And then, here we actually have a very interesting the code. Uh, basically, the, we we actually define we uh, basically the draw the rectangle uh, re, uh, rectangular shape a uh, rectangle uh, rectangular shape by uh, calling by by uh, defining four different vertices. So given this x uh, uh, starting for x comma y, we actually increasing y. So then you can see that x here. <coughs> Uh, so for that this actually world, somehow other we actually look at the, this world within this one, and then in this case actually we some other uh, we map the, this world into the this the screen our screen space. So we overlay our screen here pixel by pixel, and then we define the, this this point. I guess this is the for example this x uh, <laughs> x and y. We uh, then we increasing the y value here. Uh, I think that the, this, this might be the more reasonable one. Uh, not, not that one. X, x comma y. We adding the, uh, we adding the y, and then this one. We also adding the then x delta and x, and then uh, then also the x delta y something like that. We draw the this and the, at that way. Then we continue on the drawing the rectangle the for the, each, uh, each pixel by pixel. We keep doing that actually. That's the one. And then we, we, we actually draw, we uh, create the rec, uh, rectangular shape to cover the pixel and then we actually doing, uh, we do the all, cross all the pixel. That's the main idea. So it's not the general, general way of doing that, but I'm just showing this one example of doing that. Uh, also this mouse callback function, so when you click the actually mouse, so you might recall that when, when, uh, when you click left or right button, we can zoom in and zoom in out. Let me show that one here. In this case, when I click left person, we are zooming in. You can see that, right? We can keep zooming in. How can you zoom in? Also, the, when I click the right person, we are zooming out, right? How can you do that? <coughs> so basically, the, that should be done in here. When the, the button is that GLG to left button is clicked, also the, uh, uh, the left button is down, click, then with zooming in, right? To do that zooming in, it means that Uh, initially, our uh, uh, 
in, within the, this infinite world space, we set up the, the, our, the uh, view of the world, right? Zooming in means it's that, and then basically the main idea is that we map the, this world in, uh, into the, our screen, right? Uh, 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 our window screen, something like that, right? But in that, in that scheme, zooming can be done by the narrowing down the, this world, right? We actually narrowing down the, the world space, the view of the world, and then map that world to the, the, the same the, uh, window screen, right? Then basically, the, we can see the more, we can see the, this world in a more finer way, right? That, that can be, the, basically, that's the, uh, how we're doing, performing the zooming in here. So that, that's why you can see that, uh, basically, the uh, x and y is the, uh, basically, the, uh, this the correlate function mouse comes with the, this button and uh, each state with the, this the location, uh, basically, where we click the button in the screen space, mx and mi. Basically, the, if we click the mouse here, then the mx and mi uh, actually indicating there in the screen space. And then we actually converting that the screen space to the wall. I will we'll get back to this later on. Then that's the corresponding world, world point x and y. And then we compute the, the current world width, that's dx dy is the current world width and height. And then uh, uh, when you actually the zooming in, uh, starting from the uh, basically the, the click button, the click the, the lo world location, uh, it becomes the, the center, and then the width and then the width and uh, the, this left and right, we actually the, uh, reducing the current width into the, uh, uh, we, uh, we reduce down the current width of, uh, by factor of 4. So actually it, uh, the world, the viewable, uh, viewable space actually reduces down, so that you can be, uh, we actually realize that it's zooming in. And for the, the other case, right button is like in, uh, click, then also the, we're increasing actually the world space. Uh, you can see that by this actually the, uh, <coughs> uh, we actually the yeah I, I can explain the this the how this equation works but the, uh, you can also the, you can by spending some time you can figure it out yes, the, I don't want to give the very, very tedious one it's the it's the, a, a, a little bit tedious with uh, somewhat uh, tedious but it's not the uh, it's not uh, intellect, uh, intellectually difficult one you can do that and then uh, once we actually the, once we zooming in you can see the when you click zooming in the, the image is actually redisplayed, right? Then one can actually directly call the display function, but it's more uh, uh, it actually it, it's more appropriate to call the to general event of general uh, redis, uh, redisplaying the image, right? So that's why we call the GLUT post redisplay. And basically the this actually the uh, it generates another event and then indicating that uh, when the, the OS has a time. Uh, then actually the, uh, we need to redraw the, uh, the OS indicating to our application uh, we need to actually re, uh, re, we need to the redisplay the, the, our screen. Then we actually we already set up that the actual display function is the, uh, associated with this uh, display. So actually we run this code again. That's the, how we are doing for the event-based actually programming. I'm not going to talk about a lot on the event-based approach, but basically the main idea is that we are we actually the uh, a lot of the function also associated with certain user interaction, uh, which actually represented by the event that passing through the, the OS, uh, that are generated by the OS also the passing to the our program. I mentioned that this function the uh, screen to wall screen to wall. Uh, there are some formulation, but it's simply the inverse function of the our world is the screen mapping. It's basically that you can just uh, revert that function that you can very easily come up with this one. Uh, the keyboard handling. So when you click the, uh, uh, when we click the certain button, this function will call with uh, this key on certain value, and the keys R, small R, uh, uh, capital R calls. We actually initialize everything. Let me let me let me click this one. Here I keep zooming in. Let me click the small R. So you can see it actually be. <coughs> We initialize everything again. Yeah. Yeah, that's the how it works. Okay, so far actually I I ran over the, actually the some code. Uh, I know it's uh, it was a little bit tedious, but the, it's I mean there a lot of uh, looking at the code actually the it should be done by yourself. Just sitting in, in front of your computer, spend some time and see the how the different structure actually work together. But also to hear, the, think about it, uh, what are the actually main, uh, main method that I give it to you. 
then uh, based on that, you can actually figure it out, uh, uh, figure it out actually the, uh, line by line. The code should be available at this course homepage, also the, uh, the, this K1 skeleton code available at the course homepage of the KLMS site. And I wish that you can understand high level, the also basic of open gel programming structure, how the open gel supports the different spaces. We didn't really implement the, the mapping, mapping code, right? But by setting up the viewport, also there is the camera by calling the open gel, uh, those mapping actually they're done by the actual open gel, uh, accelerate by the, this GPU. That's the main idea. And then the, our first problem assignment one is that download the, this the code, compile it, see that with, uh, uh, or the link it, also the play with play, click here and there and, and, and so on. So uh, and then I like actually give it a bit smaller uh, asking to fix this issue. So basically there I talked about the reshape function, right? Reshape function. So given this is our current reshape function, it looks very complicated. But main idea is that in this case I want to maintain the the uh, basically I want to maintain I want to show the uh, the uh, world as it is to our screen. So for example, oh, that's going on. That's going on. I think I, I missed. So here. Uh, you can see the actual world shape, right? Then now, now I change the reach like this, looks okay, it looks same, right? But when I actually change the aspect ratio of my screen, you can see still I can see the actually I can see the this the, you can see that the, the uh, aspect ratio of the world actually maintained even though the the different uh, uh, the ratio between width and height of the screen, right? Uh, here when I do the other one, you can see that this one, right? But actually some people like it, some people may not like it, right? So in that case, actually, the, I don't I don't utilize this region, right? So that uh, in that case, uh, I just wanted to use this very simple the reshape function, like the basically <laughs> main idea is that uh, this actually the reshape the width and height, the uh, reshape the screen the width and height. It could be the arbitrary one like this, uh, but actually the, then I just wanted to use the all the space and then. I just wanted to. I just wanted to see that. I just applied my aspect ratio of the, this screen to the uh, to the wall. So actually, I won't use this one. But if I only change the uh, at the skeleton code, when I change the this existing one into this one, and then when I use the, this uh, this uh, this ratio between width and height, I reshape the this screen. Then I got the, this kind of error. Maybe because uh, there are some issue. There are some issue on the this uh, display function. It actually they're having some assumption. Uh, basically, the uh, I mean, so far I talked about actually the the rate. The basically the here we assume in the prior setting is that I actually the assume that the basically I'm maintain I'm uh, maintaining actually the the uh, uh, the ratio of the I'm actually showing uh, I'm maintaining aspect ratio of the width and height of the wall to the screen space. But the, now actually I want to follow the is the ratio between width and height of the screen space even the wall. So there, there's, there's some, some line, I think the a few lines should be changed actually. Uh, then uh, think about it actually, then uh, fix, uh, fix it, also the, yeah, submit that one. <coughs> Our homework is that I recommend you to look at the, our chapter, my book of chapter, chapter 3, not everything, but the uh, 3.1 viewport transformation, which will be covered the next time. So go over the next lecture slide before the class, before watching the video, that actually helps you to understand the, the materials. Again, you need to watch the video and then submit the before the every Monday class. And also come up with the questions uh, and uh, try to do that uh, two times during the whole semester. Yeah. And next time I talk about transformation. Thank you. See you later. Bye.